Good afternoon and uh, welcome to our topic. And this topic is presented by me and I am Hoshi and uh, Tele Wang. We are all from the Pangu team. Okay, so uh, I guess all the, all the guys come here are interested in the IOS security. Uh, in fact, uh, um, in, the, in the past few years, uh, a lot of security researchers already researched the uh, security of the iOS and a lot of attack the surface is already exposed. Um, but in this topic, uh, we will talk about some uh, neglected attack surface in iOS 8 and uh, we will show that uh, based on the previous work and uh, we uh, put some improve, improved uh, previous work, we could still find some new bugs. And also there are some uh, results in this uh, talk um, that uh, there are some maybe zero days and uh, some bugs are fixed. Uh, actually this topic we prepared is um, about two months ago. At that time the, the version is about uh, iOS 8.2. So all the bugs uh, we discovered here uh, as uh, I promise to, uh, to on that version of iOS. Okay, so the, uh, so the agenda today, uh, it's uh, just basic knowledge of uh, the our security background and uh, we'll review some old attack services, the, uh, list of some bugs used in the past year break and then we focus on the kernel part first, see what, the, what more we could find in the kernel and after that we, uh, for the, for the users, user land space, uh, we focus on talking about the XPC service fuzzing uh, because of the, actually due to the time of this presentation, uh, we will focus on some point of the uh, neglected attack service. And finally, that's conclusion. So as security, I just list some word here. I think uh, we are already familiar with this um, security mechanism and the sandbox, the code sign signature. Uh, a lot of exploit mitigations and uh, the data protection to protect your personal information. And uh, maybe in the next major uh, version of uh, iOS, it's iOS 9, maybe the Apple will uh, in, uh, introduce the hypervisor uh, to, uh, for the security of kernel, maybe. Okay, so let's go to the first part and review the uh, all the attack surface. Uh, first, to introduce the uh, user land attack surface. Okay, so we divided the user land attack service into two big categories, uh, local and uh, remote. And also in local, there's uh, two, two kind of attacks. Uh, the first is the through the USB cable, that means uh, you connected your iOS devices to your laptop. And the other is uh, you install the applications, for, for example, from the App Store, uh, from some enterprise certificates signed application. So for the first uh, first type, the uh, through the USB, USB cable, that uh, Apple Apple enables you to manage your iPhone uh, in through through iTunes. So uh, there's a lot of attack based on the iTunes protocol protocol, and um, Apple uh, supplied uh, some features like the FC, the file access interface, and you can back up and restore your iPhone, the interface, and also you could just install the uh, install application uh, in iTunes. So they have the install D. And uh, another, if you have developed the uh, iOS applications, uh, you could just debug the uh, application on the iOS devices at the wrong time. That this is uh, provided by the Xcode. Also, for the uh, 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 for the installed application, we give two examples here. And uh, the first is the Jekyll application. This is also released be uh, released by our team member Tele Wang uh, in two, uh, 2013 at uh, the US Nix Security. Uh, this this application is a special application that use the private uh, API in the application, but it is still passed the review of the uh, Apple and uh, uploaded it to the Apple Store. So you can't say that the review of Apple can guarantee that all the applications in App Store is security. And another 
example here is the mask attacks. Uh, this is the uh, public uh, this year by FireEye Research. Uh, actually, this problem is that uh, you uh, you could uh, just uh, write an application and uh, set the bundle ID to the exactly same as some other applications, and then you can just replace the original one. That enables you maybe to do like fish or something attack. Yeah, actually, the the attack through the USB cable is widely used by the past jailbreaks. So, and that's a lot of, uh, for example, in the recent jailbreak, and they they are able to mount their their own fake uh, DDI to the uh, on the device and then can uh, easily get the root privilege on the device. Okay, so the for the remote attack surface, uh, actually, so uh, any network connections between uh, uh, in your phone can be an attack surface, and the obvious target is the browser. So for, for iOS, the browser is the mobile Safari, and uh, this is also uh, where attacked. For example, the uh, Jailbreak Me by Comics, he used the he used the browser in Safari, and also uh, in mobile phone to own, and uh, it, they can uh, they can attack your uh, devices and uh, collect your contact information or get your photos. Okay, so another uh, attack surface is message. Uh, through mess uh, the first uh, the first message attack is introduced in two thousand nine by Charlie Miller, and uh, we are surprised to uh, to see that there's uh, actually in this year there also uh, an, an a bug about the message. If you uh, send a, a special Unicode uh, message to some device, they can just cause the the reboot. And uh, the system network demos, uh, this program is actually exists uh, in resolving the um, configuration profile, network configuration profile. And the demo will crash and your system is just uh, just unresponsible, uh, unres unresponded. Okay, so this uh, is also released today, or uh, this year, sorry. Okay, so after the user then pass, uh, let's have a look at the uh, kernel attack services. So basically, the uh, any communication between the user space and the uh, kernel space could be an attack surface, and uh, uh, there's two ways to trap into the kernel from user space. Uh, the first is the uh, BSD system calls, uh, like uh, open, write, read, and the another is a Mac trap. Uh, this is a very uh, special for on iOS device. So uh, actually, we we are able to uh, divide this uh, into some small categories. I just list them here. For example, the I/O control. This API, this API, API actually is very, very powerful. Uh, it's able to uh, control some system variables, uh, read or write some system variables inside kernel. And the file system, of course, you, if you want to mount a, a image. The, the kernel must to resolve the file system and the device. Uh, actually, the kernel will provide some function, functional devices in the slash dev slash. And uh, another big part is IO kit. Uh, most uh, uh, most of function is provided in, by this IO kit interfaces. And uh, another one is the MIG system. We will uh, discuss this later. Okay, so after that, uh, we will see in the past. Uh, in the past, a lot of kernel bugs are already uh, used in the in the past jailbreaks. We will have a look at them. So for so to attack the the file system, uh, actually in jailbreak me three, and the, the kernel bug is that it's a very very basic uh, stack overflow. There's uh, actually no check of the uh, HFS legacy volume name. So cause the problem is a basic stack overflow, and also the uh, um, in Corona for iOS five this uh, this exploit should be right by the Porto two G, and uh, he claimed that this is a HFS heap overflow, and uh, for uh, for uh, system calls there's uh, some bug in Prosex bar. 
and the in this in this function it uh, incorrectly checks the file action data and uh, calls the bar. Actually, this bug is also exploited uh, in the uh, jailbreak for iOS six point one point three. Okay, let's have a look at the IO control, the powerful uh, API. Uh, that's a bug called packet filter kernel exploit. Actually, in this very special handler, the uh, inside this handler, it doesn't uh, correct uh, initialize the mem mem uh, member of our data structure. So that cause you could uh, just uh, pass a, a kernel address inside, and at the end of function, it will decrease the value of uh, the address. That means you are able to decrease uh, the, the value of any kernel address, so you can change the kernel address data. And this bug is used in Lamelo and uh, Green Poison for IS point for uh, IS four point one. Okay, so devices. Uh, there are also a lot of uh, attack to devices, and uh, there's a very famous uh, bug. It's, it's used in the uh, Evasion 7 for the iOS 7 uh, jailbreak. Uh, in this PTMX get IO control handler functions, uh, and this handler didn't uh, check the input the parameter. When input parameter is the uh, actually the minor number of the PTMX device. And uh, th that caused that out of bounds memory access bug. Okay, so the last part is the L kit. Actually, there's uh, so so many bugs in in this L kit. So I just uh, uh, list some name of them. Yeah, uh, uh, actually, in recent uh, jailbreaks, and uh, all the kernel bugs are exist in the L kit. Okay, so after after we have a look at some some past attack services and what will we talk today, uh, two parts for the for the kernel part we will talk about first um, how to uh, there are some some small uh, tips to improve your IOKit fuzzing and uh, um, and beside that we introduce some more part to fuzz in IOKit and uh, and after all uh, after that. I will introduce the MIG system, and uh, and this actually this might be uh, this is not well fast in the past. And for user space, I will focus on the XPC fuzzings, and uh, we will uh, introduce the work uh, we do. Actually, that is uh, uh, some difference from the, the work from the Google Project Zero. Uh, as we know, they also released some bugs for the. Uh, for the user user land space. Okay, so let's go to the first part. It's the kernel part. Uh, uh, basically, we we see that uh, um, the IO kit contains more code, so there's more possibility that we may find that the vulnerabilities in IO kit part. So. We think that the L kit is really the best target for kernel fuzzing. You, you, are, you are, it's, it's, it's not so hard for you to find some results in this part. And uh, actually, two years ago, uh, also there's a topic from Pangu team presented by me and uh, uh, Xiao Bo Chen. We talked about how to do the L kit fuzzing. So we don't give some basic information uh, in this talk. Uh, we just uh, give some tips how to improve the uh, fuzzing. Okay, so the first is that uh, we all know that most IOKit fuzzers will focus on calling this function, IOConnect call method. Yeah, this, this is the uh, powerful functions to um, do all the other tunnels. But, um, but if you look inside this function, actually, uh, this is not the, mo the, the lowest function. Actually, actually, this is just a wrapper. This function called IO underscore connect underscore method function. And this and that function actually is the low level function. It just called Mac Mac message to trap into kernel. So what the what did the, the wrapper function do? Uh, actually the, the they they did a very very simple thing. They checked the uh, size of the input and output structure to uh, determine if if the size is very large uh, larger than the four kilobytes, uh, it will tell the kernel 
you should use an IO memory descriptor to map this user land memory so you can access it. Otherwise, if this if the buffer is small, uh, you just uh, you can just call copy in and copy out to access the memory. Uh, this is obviously for the performance considerations. Okay, this is a snapshot of the code you can see obviously here, and uh, that there's two sides check here, and uh, in different in different branch, and they will pass uh, pass different parameters to the low level function. So the idea to improve the previous IOKit fuzzing is that you should not call IO connect call method. Uh, it's a it is good. It, it is a better choice to call the IO underscore connect underscore method the more low level functions, and that gives you the power to bypass the size restrictions. And uh, since uh, since uh, some some IO IO kit drivers uh, were uh, uh, for for different uh, different input, uh, in, for for example the copying or you for our memory descriptor, they will go to different branch of code. So um, by call the low level function, you can fuzz uh, more parts of the code. And there's an uh, example here. This CV, actually this is used in the past jailbreak. And uh, uh, this vulnerability code exists in the branch of uh, uh, the driver to uh, deal with a large output structure. Uh, so. Uh, but, but the problem is if you want to exploit this bug, you want to exploit this bug, you, you should do some heap spray and heap function spray. That, may, that means you need to put the, put the memory into a smaller zone, not, not larger than four, ki four kilobytes, uh, must, must in a smaller key allocated zone. So, so if you call the uh, IO connect call method function, you will not be able to check the bug. So, you need to call the low-level function. You can check the bug, and you can bypass the size restriction, so you can exploit the bug. Okay. So another um, tips is that uh, actually the the info information leak bugs are, are really important these days because if you want to write a working exploit, you need to bypass the uh, mitigations and the, the most. Uh, Important mitigations is always the ASARR. So, uh, what what do we do in our father? Actually, we check uh, all the uh, possible kernel addresses in all the output of our fuzzing results. So, uh, this is uh, this is useful because in uh, we actually we find an information leak bug and use that bug in the uh, past uh, Pangu jailbreak. So besides the call, besides the to improve uh, the fuzz by calling a low-level function, we we still introduce uh, some uh, new parts to to fuzz for IO kit. This is the shared memory and the IO kit traps. So uh, we look at the shared memory first. The shared memory uh, is that that actually IO kit drivers is able to share uh, memory directly. With the user space applications, and it assumed that the user applications, user application already know the, the structure. Uh, I, I mean, what 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 kind of data you put in this shared memory? Uh, so, the user space if wants to open the shared memory, it's quite easy. Just call one API named the IO Connect Map Memory after you successfully opening the devices. Uh, the, there's the this definition of this function, and uh, this is an interesting uh, parameter we should pay attention. Is the memory type, and uh, this this flag uh, is meaningful to for some IO kit extensions. Uh, we we see how hand, how kernel handle this. So if some IO kit wants to share memory with user space applications. They, they need to override this function, client memory for type. And this is a simple, uh, simple example code uh, for the uh, HID event service user client. And uh, you can see it's, uh, it, uh, all the 
all the things to do is to return an IO memory described object. Then the kernel will know uh, which memory should be mapped into the user space. Um, but uh, actually, if you look to other, some, some other IO code extensions, as I said before, some, some functions, some override functions, we're dealing with the, the second uh, parameter is type. This is the, the this what this memory type passed into the kernel, and uh, you must input the correct type to successfully open the open the memory. Okay, so the idea to improve the fuzzing, so you should try to open the share the memory of an IO code, and uh, you can randomly uh, you can randomly fill the shared memory while fuzzing the IO connect call method because some data uh, in this shared memory is used, the, uh, used by some uh, internal functions. So we should combine, combine these two together. Uh, there are several examples and uh, the former two of the bugs in IO data queue is reported by uh, Google Project Zero and uh, the third one is the uh, kernel bug used in the Pangu jailbreak. Uh, so we think that the problem in this scenario is that uh, uh, the kernel actually should not trust the memory data um, may be modified by user applications. You see, you, we, we shared, the kernel shared his, uh, its memory to the user space and used the data from the user space, then you should uh, more, more restriction and more check on these data. You not easily trust them. Okay, so another another uh, part we talk here is the traps. Uh, the owl, uh, the traps can be uh, triggered in, by user space by uh, calling the IO connect trap, the six functions, and finally they all call the IO kit user client trap. And uh, the input is quite easy. There's only one index that's a uh, like selector of a function, and uh, uh, besides that, there's uh, maybe uh, there's uh, up to six parameters input the quite a lot. Okay, so how, how can I handle this? So uh, the if we see the function we can we can see that the kernel will first get the get an structure called the IO external trap according to the index we input. Okay. And if it successfully get a structure and then, we'll, then it will directly call the function point in this structure and there's no more checks. If the if some IO, IO kit extension wants to uh, provide this feature, and um, they may override two functions, but uh, but if you look inside, uh, you will see that most uh, most uh, drivers choose to override the get target and trap for index functions. So, how to first this part? Actually, uh, first you to locate all the overridden functions. And in the functions, you could determine the range of the index. So, and then you can you can do a fast because there's no more size check. You just can put uh, six parameters. But the problem is that uh, if you if you find some bug and you analyze it, you will find the find that the IO external trap the structure the the definition of this structure actually is different from the word in the XNU source code. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, another member at the end of the structure. We we call the, it uh, flag here. Yeah, the third word. Uh, actually, if the if the flag equals zero, that means the second member function is what as is what at, as we think. It's a real function address point. But if the flag is is one not zero, that means the function. Uh, the function member is the uh, offset uh, of the function in, in the uh, in the object v table. So, uh, and uh, after the after I talk about the allocate traps, we move to another part is the MIG system. And the MIG system actually basically is a very very uh, low level API called in uh, called mark message or uh, actually, a lot of APIs finally called this one to trap into kernel and uh, dispatch the messages in the kernel. 
Uh, this there is a simple example here. It's um, uh, I/O service close, and you can see that it's directly called Mac message and send message to kernel. But we have to pay attention here is that there's the uh, the message ID. Uh, they set a very specific message ID. So how the kernel handle this? Uh, all the Mac messages into uh, kernel space were dispatched by IPC key object uh, server function, and this function find the uh, MIG hash structure in MIG box variable according to the message ID. Okay, and then it will do some check and call the call the routing of this in this structure. So, if you want to know all the functions, you need to locate the MIG buckets. And uh, uh, if you find this in the XNU source, where you will saw uh, this this uh, data actually is initialized in MIG init function. And in, in MIG init function, it's just to uh, read all the data from the MIG E variable and store them into this uh, MIG buckets. So take a look at MIG E. Okay, so this uh, this defines a lot of subsystems here. So each subsystem will have different function, but you can't find definition in the XNU source code. So we go to IDA and reverse the kernel catch of the iOS devices, and uh, uh, you can locate the MIG E variable and uh, find a lot of subsystems here. And uh, uh, if we t we take an example here is the um, uh, Mac VM subsystem, and uh, uh, at the beginning, this is the uh, the minimal message, and the minimal routing number. Actually, this is the uh, message ID uh, set in the uh, Mac message function, and the, also there's a maximum. After that, there's an array of the uh, functions. So. After after locating all of these uh, variables, you will know what you will know all the valid uh, uh, message IDs. So when you get these IDs, it's possible for you to roughly fuzzing all the all the uh, subsystem functions. Uh, but uh, the result may be not so good. So in our view, I think maybe more accurately fuzzing uh, yeah, must must be used to fuzz the. MIG system. That means uh, for each functions, for different functions, you need to look inside the functions and figure out what the structure inside this message so that you can really fuzz these functions. Uh, anyway, I think we, we think that the MIG subsystems is not well fast in the in the, in the previous work. So maybe in the future there may be some bugs found in this. And, but uh, today we just give a give an example of the uh, the result of our fuzzers. Uh, this bug is ex exists in the IOKit traps actually. Uh, for uh, IO stream user client uh, override the get target and trap for index function, and uh, there's a res uh, you can see in this function the uh, actually the A three is the uh, input parameter. This is index. Okay, so the function restrict the index uh, to uh, restrict the index uh, must less or than two, but but uh, we we take a look into the uh, the, the variable he return. Actually, there's only two two elements in this array. That means index zero and index one. But restrict, in, but if you want, if you set the index equals two. There's an out of bound access memory back here. Yes, actually, this I think this is a very low level mistake for 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 a programmer. Uh, anyway, this code is just unbelievable. Yes, and, it's, and this bug is still not fixed in the a four eight point four version. Okay, so next I will pass the, to the Tele One and talk about the user land space. Hello. Hi, I'm Tele Wang. I'm going to take over the second part. In this part, I will uh, present how we find and exploit vulnerabilities in XPC services. So, you may ask, what does XPC means? So, 
In short, XPC is a kind of inter-process communication mechanism on Mac OS. If you look at the applications running on iOS, very likely they are confined by the sandbox. That means these app uh, applications have very limited access to the whole system. So to, co to complete these a lot of fancy jobs, they have to communicate with a lot of system services so that they can finish the job, do a lot of useful stuff. Uh, the design of IPC inter-process communication is very good for security because the design makes it possible to separate different functionalities into different process. And then the system could apply different permissions and also sandbox profiles to different process. In that case, the system doesn't have to mess up everything together, and that would be very terrible for security. And, but the potential problem for IPC is that IPC would introduce extra data processing. For example, the client side has to prepare the request and send the request to the server. Server means some system service. And the server side has to pass the request and make a response if necessary. So there is uh, some extra data processing. Apparently, such a kind of data processing forms a new attack, a potential attack surface. And on uh, Mac OS and iOS, actually, you can find uh, a number of uh, IPC mechanisms, such as the sockets or distributed objects. And among these, two of the most uh, uh, most uh, commonly used with uh, Mac message and the XPC. So for Mac message, it's the fundamental of all IPCs. It's implemented through the Mac trap called Mac message override trap. It's the fundamental of all the IPCs. And uh, as a result, if you look at the history, a lot of very good previous work there. For example, the, the talks I listed in this slide, they this. This discussed the inter uh, detail, internal details of Mac message and also introduced uh, how to find vulnerabilities in Mac, Mac message based uh, uh, service. And uh, compared, to, compared with Mac message, XPC is a relatively new uh, IPC mechanism on Mac OS and iOS. It was firstly introduced in Mac OS 10.7 and iOS 5 in 2011. And actually, XPC is built on top of Mac message. It's just kind of a wrapper of Mac, Mac message. But it, it significantly sim uh, simplified the low level details of IPC. So, in other words, XPC, XPC APIs provide a very simple interface to look, to look up the services or connect to the services only by the name. And uh, these APIs are very, very easy to use to like, send or receive strongly typed messages. So in a world, it's very easy to use a uh, kind of framework to do that uh, IPC. So uh, I'm going to use two pieces of code to, to demonstrate how to run an uh, XPC server and also uh, XPC client on iOS. So this slide shows the, the code for server side. And uh, iOS, uh, the most common way is to use this API, uh, XPC connection, create a Mac service to set up the, 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 the server. And the first parameter is the name of the service, which has to be reserved in the Mac services of the system plist files. That means basically only the built-in binaries could use API to, to launch, to set the built-in services. They are not open to third-party applications. And uh, one important parameter is the third one. So basically, the same API can also be used by the client side to connect to the service. The only difference, oh, sorry. The only difference is the uh, third parameter. And here, there is a macro, the one who, its value is one, it indicates it's a server. And for a server, that means it's very common to handle multiple connections at the same time. So you may, you may want to have a connection handler. That means you want to dispatch a connection or specify the connection context or whatever. So you, you, want, you, you can use this API, like explicit connection set event handler first for the first time, 
you can set up the connection dispatcher here. And given a connection, you can call the API again, but this time you will set the message handler. And for the message handler, now you are able to get each piece of message. And actually, the XPC message is is in the type of explicit externally, I will show you later. And But basically, that's how the server side uh, runs. And let's move to the client side. And as I mentioned, the same API is used for client side to connect to the service. And the first uh, parameter is the name of the ser service you want to connect to. And the only difference is the third one. So now you use zero, that indicates it's a client rather than a server. And uh, now it's time to prepare the message and send it to the server. And the, basically you just create a XPC dictionary. It's a key value pair container data structure. You can insert other XPC objects into the dictionary with a key and the value. For example, now, in this example, I insert a member, its name is value one. Its real value is a 1.0 in the type of double. And now we can send it to a server and get a reply. So it's pretty easy to use. And this slide summarizes the data flow along the XPC channel. So from the similar point of view, uh, point of view you prepare a XPC dictionary and uh, serialize it into a MAC message, send it to the other process. And from the receiver point of view, okay, you receive the MAC message and deserialize it into an XPC dictionary. And uh, given the dictionary, you extract the XPC objects. And for each ob XPC object, you can further extract the retrieve the raw data, the value, and process the value. So we believe all these three steps, I mean the deserialization, object dereference, uh, data dereference could be attacked. So here I have to mention the, the independent work from uh, Ambir uh, Research and uh, Google Project Zero. In, in this work, he found a lot of vulnerabilities in the object dereference part, the, a lot of type confusions. And uh, this piece of code demonstrates the root cause of the type confusion. Basically, the server side receives some untrusted message, and uh, the server side also presumes the type of some member objects in the message. For example, in the code, you can see, sorry, I only have one letter here. So you have the message, and uh, it tries to retrieve the, retrieve the object using the key. And uh, for the return object, there's no type of validation. And uh, the server side continue to just believe it's a uh, XPC type data and the dereference the data. Because different uh, XPC object has different uh, internal data structures. If you don't put the, if you don't, don't perform the type validation, it would cause some security problems. You could refer to NBR's work for more details about the exploit. And, uh, but Apple made a, a very good response. So what Apple did is it introduced a lot of type checks in all the XPC get family, that, that family of APIs. So basically, in, in the low level, and the low level APIs, Apple performs a lot of type validations. If the type mismatch, it, just, it will quickly return zero. So it fundamentally, fixed all these kind of type confusions. And actually, independently, we find a lot of type confusions on iOS platform, but unfortunately, we find Apple already fixed these kind of vulnerabilities. So we made a step further, and we focus on the data dereference part. So, so given the, the raw data, how the server side handles this data, it, that will that intro, intro, introduce security problems. So basically, we want to do some fuzzing, and it's an easy way to, 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 to test uh, a lot of service. And uh, basically, we have two uh, fuzzing policies. The first one is passive fuzzing. That means we just uh, select uh, a targeted services, and uh, we, by hooking 
the explicit connection set new in the handler function, we are able to get the message handler. We know which piece of function will handle all the incoming explicit messages. And we further hook that handlers, and then we can mutate all the all the received explicit dictionaries and see whether the, the service would crash, and then we can analyze the crash. And we also want to do some proactive fuzzing. That means we want to proactively construct the explicit message and send it to the, all the services we can connect. In that case, we may trigger more crashes or find more vulnerabilities. So now the question is, how can we find the, the services we, we can connect? You know, I mentioned the sandbox at the beginning, so a lot of services you may not be able to connect. So what we did is, first we decompiled, they, we, we first we decompiled the container sandbox and uh, find all the connectable Mac app lookup names. So basically, uh, this snapshot shows a part of the services you are, the, all the apps, uh, you download it from App Store, they are able to connect. And, but some of, some of the, these services are still using Mac message. We, we want to do XPC focused uh, fuzzing. So what we did is we first uh, grab this API. And in that case, we are able to narrow, narrow the targets and we can find, okay, these are the services we are able to connect even with the app running in the container through XPC APIs. And uh, the more harder thing is, the much harder thing is how to construct the message because, you know, the server side only retrieves the objects using the keys. The keys is kind of predefined. If you don't know the keys, the, the, the server side won't uh, process your message. So the good news is XPC APIs they provide a, a set of retrieving, retrieve APIs for getting the objects by using through the keys. So we just uh, implement a very simple Adapro Python script, and it, which will find all the code reference to such APIs, uh, like explicit dictionary, dictionary get, this family APIs, and we just analyze the, the second parameter, which are the keys of the objects. So we are able to retrieve all the keys that the, the server side would like to accept. We, more, we put them in the single, big, very, very large dictionary and send it to the server side. So we run the father iOS 8.2, which was the latest version at that moment. And surprisingly, we find a lot of crash. Even the, the, the father is very dumb. And, uh, some of the crash we, I will show you might be fixed in iOS 8.4, but we are not sure. And uh, we analyzed these crashes, and uh, in general, we classify them into three categories, and we will go through each one by one. The most typical case is now pointer of reference. So the root cause is the server side just presume the existence of the certain case in the message. So it just tries to retrieve the object, but doesn't check whether the, the, the pointer is zero or not, and continue to use that pointer. Definitely that will trigger the crash. And uh, in this page, you will see uh, this is a piece of a decom uh, decompiled code, and this is the path of the uh, executable. And uh, in the, in the uh, below, you, you can see the POC code to trigger the crash. And, now, point of the reference is not a big deal, but for the, for the IPC scenario, it's a little different. So because for, if this program, if this application is kind of malicious, it can crush the, some services. That means even all other banana applications are not able to use any services. For example, if I, if I can crush the, some very important service in your iPhone, that may trigger some kind of denial of service. And uh, the, let's move to the out-of-bound memory rate. There's a program called, uh, okay, I'll just show you some typical example. Actually, we find a lot of similar problems. And uh, this is, the CVM server program is a component of OpenGL ES. And in this, 
in this page you can see at the beginning the server side tries to retrieve the object using the uh, using the key x which will return it's supposed to return a binary array just a, a raw array but the program doesn't perform any length check and directly pass the buffer to another function inside of this function you can see it tries to dereference the 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 value with offset 8 and 12. So for example, you just pass the uh, array with length of like 4. Definitely, if you want to access the, the offset like 8 or 12, it will trigger the after bounce read. And then you can also find the POC code here. And uh, <coughs> besides the, the memory read errors, we also find a lot of memory errors in, the, in this library. Uh, you can find the source code of this library and the Google, uh, oh, sorry, and Apple's uh, website. And uh, let's quickly go through the source code. You can easily understand why they made the mistake. So basically, uh, this API is used to get get the DNS configuration through X, 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 XPC services. And uh, basically, the data ref is retrieved from the XPC message, and uh, it. There is some data propagation, but it doesn't matter. Finally, the data is passed in, passed to the, the function named expand configure. But the code totally trusts the, the, the value inside of the message. And for example, it directly use in underscore attributes as the array index. If you are able to control the message, you can set up a super large value here. Definitely uh, using the, the, this as the index, it will trigger the memory error. And uh, finally, I want to share a remote, remote code execution bug in a program called IPA, IAP Transport D program. And uh, it's a very kind of surprising bug to us. And let's go through the code quickly again. And basically, the server side tries to retrieve the object using the key uh, port ID. And it will, this API will return an integer. <coughs> And, uh, but the server side simply uses the integer as the object pointer. Here you can see it tries to make a virtual function call, but the object pointer is passed from the client side. So basically, you just construct the, 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 the value and send it to the server side. It will use, trigger some memory crash. But it, for this bug, it's very easy to exploit. Why? So the key. The key point is how to control how to control the uh, this expression. So the short answer is to use the hip spring. You can refer to MBR's work to uh, to say how easily you can send a very super large XPC message and affect the heap layout. So basically, it's it's very easy. And for the second problem is you because of the code signing mechanism and the DEP mechanism. You are not able to jump into the, the injected shell code. You have to leverage existing code. That means you have to use ROP like log like technique to, to implement the shell code. And the good news is on iOS, all the dynamic libraries are merged into a, a same catch file, which is shared among all the processes. So if you find a gadget in your own process space, that means you can find the, the exactly same address in other process. So ROP is just uh, super easy. And let's talk about the impact of the bug. Okay, so first, this, this uh, service is connectable by any applications running in the container sandbox. So that means any application you downloaded from the App Store is able to export the vulnerability. And uh, the second consequence is, you know, for the apps you downloaded from App Store, it's confined to the sandbo uh, sandbox. It cannot touch a lot of system uh, files or private information. But the, the program, the app, if it's malicious, it can export the vulnerability in the previous in the program, in the system service, and then it can easily bypass the sandbox and gain more access to your system. So we believe it's pretty dangerous bug. And uh, so let me conclude the talk quickly. Uh, we reviewed the tank surface in iOS 8, and we demonstrated how to improve the fuzzing to find vulnerabilities. So generally, LKID fuzzing is not new. IPC fuzzing is not new. But if you combine, combine these previous techniques 
with new improvements, with some new tri tricks. It's not surprised to find new vulnerabilities and more findings. And also, we believe that Apple puts more efforts on improving the whole security architecture rather than fixing individual bugs like what XPC did. But if you make a step further, maybe you can find you can still find bug vulnerabilities. And uh, because the XNU code has a very long history, we we believe that review all the old, uh, very old source code is very helpful to security. Okay, thank you for your attention. We are glad to answer your questions.